And the artificial intelligence, or AI, is an algorithm that can learn to do amazing things. Recognize people, animals, and photos. Find new carbon capturing materials to combat climate change, or even help detect cancer. How do they learn all this? Data. Big data. And AI learns by analyzing data sets, so for example, photos. And the more data it analyzes, the better it learns. But that's a problem. Because the more data an AI has to analyze, the more time it will take, and the more computer power it needs. And for some application, this means a huge supercomputer working for a month, consuming gigawatts of electricity, that's just not sustainable. Can we do something about it? Yes, we can. And to give you an idea what, let us play a role-playing game. I will be the data scientist and you play the role of the AI. And your mission today, should you choose to accept it, is to learn to distinguish photos of kangaroos from photos of wildlife. That's a typical task in data science. I have here a data set of four photos. I show you each photo, tell you whether it's a kangaroo or a wild beast, that you will progressively learn to differentiate the two animals. All clear? Okay, let's go. So this is a kangaroo. This is a wild beast. Hold on a minute. And that's what you actually have in you in your learning process. No, right? The small silhouette in the background far away, you can't see much. This data is essentially useless for you. Next is another wallaby. This, on the other hand, is very useful data. You can see exactly how well it is built. And it is shorter, rounder, and cuter than a kangaroo. Very useful. Last photo, another kangaroo. Again, blurry photo, useless. So, out of the four photos I had in my data set, how many were actually useful for your learning process? Only two. And I'm not showing you the other two photos as well. You'd have learned just as well. This is true for any data set in data science. Only a fraction of the photos of the data is actually useful. In practice, researchers in computer science like myself are developing algorithms to identify which data in the data set are useful, which are useless. Once useless data have been identified, they can be thrown away. This way, the AI will have less data to analyze. Therefore, it will use less time and less computer power. That's more. Since the data I threw away was useless anyway, but well, the quality of the learning will remain very good. Because it's really as people say, learning is not about funding, it's all about quality. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Hugo. Um, yeah. I guess I'm going to ask about applications. Where do you see this being most useful? Oh, for example, Matt. Some people are doing research to find which materials could be great for building a quantum computer, for example. And the fact is that you want to show your AI for it to learn to uh, predict if your material is good or not. You want to show it a material and say, this is good, just as I did for the kangaroos and the wallabies, or this is not good. But you have to know before if a material has a good properties or not. And for that, you need to run lengthy computer simulations. So you cannot do it for any data set of material, you can't do it for tens of thousands of material. You have to pick a certain number of material, which you think are interesting, only um, make your computer simulation on those, and then give it to your AI to learn. And that's why you have to reduce the size of the data set, otherwise you have years and decades and centuries of computer simulation ahead before you can actually give your data to your AI. Thanks, Hugo. Um... So this is fascinating how you use AI to pick out the useless data. Does that process itself not also use a lot of energy? No, because we're designing these algorithms specifically to run very fast, otherwise I agree with you to completely defeat the point. And also you may think that it's not about also just learning from the data, it's also about storing the data. And you know that this data senses consume lots of energy, it's two percent of the energy consumption in the electricity consumption. In the Yes. And worldwide, I don't know if you can guess the figure, how much electricity we're consuming for data centers in a year. But it's 200 terawatts, two with 14 zeros afterwards, three times what Switzerland is consuming per year. So just having smaller data sets can help also cut these energy costs at the level of the data centers. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, I was wondering what will be, how will be data science when we have the quantum computer? If we will have someday, I mean, 
it, it, we, maybe we don't have all these these uh, needs of compressing data and so on because it will do everything, I guess. Well, let's look about it in the 50 years of the time being quantum computers and you know it's in embryonic states of research. I thought it was very fast and some researchers are already devising some machine learning algorithm with those quantum computers. But there will be a revolution and as for any revolution, there's no telling what will happen. So I'm embracing myself with lots of surprising and lots of defenses in science. And I hope you're as excited as I am. Thank you.